Welcome back to Beyond the Whistle, a sports show located in Boise, Idaho. We've got you covered on all you need to know about current sports news from the professional, collegiate, and local levels. We'll be your host throughout the season. I'm Andrew Vincent. And I'm Alex East. On this, week's on this week's episode, we've got you covered on NFL talk, college football, NBA offseason news, and some M MLB storylines. To start off the first episode of our new season, we're going to be starting off with some NFL talk. Yes, indeed. It has been a wild week, people. It's um, crazy, yeah. Especially not even our week three wrap up, but just I the know. first game of week four. I know. Um, we kind of got to cheat because we got to see week a little preview of week four before yes. you know all the other Thursday yeah. night football, Miami and uh, uh, the and Bengals. Bengals. So yep. that was a crazy game. But going back to week three, yeah, let's, yeah, start let's, three let's start there. Let's start in the back. Yes. Um, so we have our Chiefs. I wanted to start off with the Chiefs because. Okay. Um, they did not look like Tough the loss. Chiefs that everyone has seen for the last five years. And they also lost to the Colts, who yeah. don't look bad, but they don't look good either. No. Um, and there seemed to be a lot of tension between Mahomes and the offensive coordinator. I did see that. I, After kind of hearing about it and looking a little bit more into it, I think it's just it was right before the end of the half. Mahomes yeah. really wanted to take a deep ball down the field. And then um, the coach just wanted him to kneel, just play it safe. Yeah. And Mahomes is the type of guy I think who He's wants to. He's going to take the chance. He wants always. to take that chance yeah. always. So I think there's a little bit of beef there. But I am a little worried about the Chiefs because offensively, I mean, you look at the game, it was 17 to 20. They're not putting up as many points. As they used to. They used to put up 42 points against teams. Yeah, but that's, you know, they're missing Tyreek Hill. They're missing, yeah, but it shouldn't He's one be. of the best receivers in the league. That's true. That's true. But it's not like they still don't have offensive weapons. I feel like they haven't been utilizing Kelsey as much as they normally did yeah. in previous years. Um, and he is a huge offensive threat for them. Mm -hmm. He rarely drops the ball. He manages to get open almost yeah. all the time. So I think they need to start utilizing that. There just seems to be a lot of dysfunction in the offense right now. Yeah. Um, it does, it's not organized like it was. I think uh, I think they're just kind of still figuring out who's going to be that guy to kind of fill. They Phil brought Tyree. in Juju Smith-Schuster. Yeah. I think they're looking for him to be that guy. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily be Tyreek Hill, but if there's no other yeah. dude who can take away some attention from Travis Kelsey, yeah. then teams can just focus in on him, and that makes it harder to get him the ball. But Absolutely. I still, I mean, we'll get into our top five teams later. Yeah. I think we still have they're, high, they're, they're, they're still a good team. I mean, with Patrick Mahomes' <clears throat> offense, they're always going to be in the top of being a top five team, in the top of going to the Super Bowl. 100%. So I never want to count them out because their offense is scary and they can come out of literally nowhere. So... <laughs> how, about, uh, how about the Dolphins and Bills, though? That was right. A, that was a pretty crazy game. Wow. Okay, so first of all, first two weeks I looked at the Bills and I'm like this team is winning the dang Super Bowl and mm -hmm. the Dolphins have no shot mm -hmm. and after the first half I'm like okay <laughs> okay wow but then Tua goes out and you're thinking okay no no more chance and then Tua comes back in yep. he looks so composed in the pocket he's never had confidence like that moving mm -hmm. within the pocket so yeah. I'm really interested to see if he will come back um, yes. probably in a week or two I think from what they've been It'll saying. It'll be interesting to see because that it was a week four injury yeah. that we'll probably get into pretty soon. Yeah. But it, it was pretty bad. Yeah. So we'll see. Um, and then I also want to talk about the two crucial mistakes by Josh Allen, which is really, really rare. He drops yeah. the snap mm -hmm. to allow them to have a field goal before halftime. And then his misstep on his throw which could have been a winning touchdown. And running out of time to go clock the uh, to clock the ball, which wasn't all his fault. His receiver was trying to get out of bounds, but yeah. they ran out of time. It's Couldn't just get a field goal mistakes that you don't see with the Bills, yes. especially a Josh Allen run yeah. offense. Which I think is why the majority of people still look at that as a fluke game. Uh, I do too. Where I agree. I, I do too. I think that the I think Bills are still you go the best and play the Bills and the Dolphins five more times and the Bills will win four out of the five. 
Yeah, because, I mean, if you look at the statistics of that game, like, it was, like, 500 yards, uh, 40 minutes of play time to yeah. the Bills, and it was, like, yeah. 20 minutes of play time and, like, 200 yards to the I Dolphins, mean, but they won. Tua so. had 13 of 18 yeah. um, completion, which is pretty consistent for him, yeah. which is looking a lot better, 189 receiving yards. So it wasn't like his game against the Ravens where he has four touchdowns. No. It wasn't anything super special I think it was just a gritty game and it came down to less mistakes yeah but I mean going back to what we were talking about at the beginning of like our show was I mean that's it's going to come down to Tua yeah. of like and he's proving that he can fill that yeah. role of he's getting looking the job done. so much more consistent yeah. he um is trusting his receivers I mean you have Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle on both yeah, sides that's you have Mostert you're as your running back who is a phenomenal player from the Niners yeah I just think that their offense has built up a lot. You have Xavier Howard mm -hmm. on defense, who I'm pretty sure went out in the middle of um, the Bengals game yesterday um, yeah, with an but injury. He's, yeah, he's but a he's a veteran um, DB. So, I mean, they have yeah. phenomenal players. They have a chance, I think, if Tua comes back, they have a chance to make a pretty strong run into yeah. the playoffs. If you don't remember our first episode of the new season, I said that was team, right? yeah, that was yeah, the team yeah. I picked to come out of nowhere. So. Well, you're looking <laughs> correct as of now, unless I mean, so week four, the first game yeah. Thursday night football, Tua and the Dolphins they played the Bengals, uh -huh. and in the second quarter, he gets thrown down by yeah. the defender. And essentially, I think his like mind had a so cramp, and he like so it's some sort of started. they said some sort of neurological like damage within the moment causes you to tense up like that and yeah, have that like, reaction. Yeah. Um, but immediately after that, they said that he was moving fine, he was speaking fine, so he didn't seem to have any long term neurological yeah. damage or spine damage. Which is all. obviously the most important which is thing. the most important thing. His family was with him. Yeah. Um, and we wouldn't want to see anyone yeah. go down with something like that. So, But um, moving back to football, where yeah. that's going to be interesting to see how the Dolphins do if yeah. they don't have them. Definitely. Um, but, but, yeah, there's definitely a lot. And then also the Packers and the Bucks. Uh, the Packers, the Packers and, the Bucks. and the Bucks. That was another um, big one. That was a huge game, honestly. Not quite sure what's going on with Tom Brady. I mean, these are two, first of all, two – Hall of Fame yeah. quarterbacks. Like, these are like, old guys but going that was a so. complete defensive game. Yeah. And that is why the Bucks defense looks phenomenal. We'll get yeah. into defenses in a little yeah. bit. And the Packers defense looks phenomenal as well. Obviously, Rodgers does not have, he's missing Devontae Adams. He doesn't yeah. have his threat anymore. He doesn't have his weapon. I think Devontae Adams is missing Aaron Rodgers too. Yeah. But that's another conversation <laughs> yeah. for, for another um, time. But that was a complete defensive game. Mm -hmm. Also, Broncos, 49ers, yes, complete Broncos. defensive game. I'm a Broncos fan. I'm interested to see how, like, because Russell Wilson, like, oh, it's so it seems like he's no. getting, like, booed, like, by because his own crap. Teddy Bridgewater produced more for our offense than Russell Wilson has produced. We give this man a $250 million contract yeah. for him to do absolutely nothing, and it's not like we don't have weapons. We have Jerry Judy. We have Cortland Sutton. Like, you can't say yeah. that we don't have offensive weapons. Yeah. Those are two, they're young. Javante Williams. Exactly, really yeah. Him, so, yeah. They're young guys, but they <laughs> perform well. Um, now, listen, we had so many drops. Yeah. The amount of dropped passes was embarrassing. But they can't expect the defense to continue to perform like they've been performing game and game and game and game after game. Um, and the Niners, too, their defense was exceptional. Well, the Niners, yeah, they're, I think. Their team, they're just missing the quarterback. Obviously, that's a whole deal on its own. Losing Trey Lance. Like, I mean, you they have just cannot Jimmy G, shake. They who got get rid a of pick Jimmy. six and a safety all in one play. Yeah. How does that even happen? <laughs> yeah, How does that rough. happen? Um, but back to your Broncos. I do think, I mean, you're two and one in one of the harder divisions in Our coach. all of football. You Brand new quarterback, brand new coach. So many he's not things ready to, I to do figure out. I do personally believe he's not ready to be an NFL coach. Those yeah. are amateur level play calls. Yeah. Are you saying like his actual design play calls yes. or like his clock management? No, no, no. His design play calls. Also like the timeout. Like yeah, in like the game I, before I felt that. like his clock management and like kicking the field goal. It's just one he just he, like he almost seems like a he's a rookie. Well, he is a rookie. But it's like he's not ready to be an NFL coach. I yeah. just don't see it. Ha I just don't see it happening long term. Yeah. Um, Arizona, 
and Rams. I thought it was interesting. Arizona has lost the last 11 out of 12 games to the Rams. Yeah, I think the Rams just have their number, personally. I mean, Aaron Donald looks stellar. So he actually tied John Randall as the um, in first interior D lineman to reach 100 career sacks. Um, which is pretty impressive. That He's is very a impressive. phenomenal athlete. I think him and Von Miller are up there together. Yeah. Um, and not even Von Miller yeah. has. Oh well, Von Miller's an outside linebacker. But yeah. Um, I just thought that was really interesting. Yeah, but talk about two teams that have honestly kind of underperformed, and at least in my opinion, I mean the Rams are still they're two and one, which is yeah. like I mean coming off of a Super Bowl win, which is understandable. They're not like an as dominant, I would say. But uh, the Cardinals actually have legit concerns about. I think going forward, I mean, the way that they rely on Kyler, he's a smaller quarterback. So the way that he runs around, takes hits, yeah. has to – I mean, his offensive line is not good. So I'm concerned that – It's like the new Seahawks. Uh, well, <laughs> well, the Seahawks, <laughs> hey, Geno Smith, ride or die. But um, I think that kind of even normally the Cardinals always like – last year they started off 8-0 – and they slowly start to fall off towards the end of the year. I think it's because they deal with, like, nicks and bumps that, yeah. like, their quarterback's dealing with. And um, I just – they don't have DeAndre Hopkins right now. I just see that being kind of a, a, yeah. bad, a bad situation for the Cardinals. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. Speaking of bad situations, uh, Jacksonville Chargers – Oh my, you're telling me, dude. I picked Justin I Herbert. I saw this. <laughs> I mean, MVP. listen, Justin Herbert is going to be a Hall of Fame quarterback, yeah. and I stand by that forever. Yes. However, I saw this tweet the other day, and it was like, when are we going to stop convincing ourselves that the Chargers are going to be so great when they're just the Chargers? Nice. And it's so true because it's like every year we have this great hope for the Chargers, and then they're just the Chargers mm -hmm. every year. Um, and they have these weapons. Yeah. So I don't really – And it is There has to be some dysfunction. And to lose that bad to the Jacksonville Jaguars, who are looking far better than they were last season. They're actually my – Trevor Lawrence think, actually is beginning to perform like everyone thought he was going to. I think they're to. my Cincinnati Bengals team this year. Like, just out of – like, who thought anything yeah. about the Jags? Who thought yeah. anything about – What are they, 2-1? and one? The 2-1, and one, no. And they look pretty good. They got a second-year quarterback in Trevor Lawrence mm -hmm. that can – I mean, I mean, we always knew he was going to be – he was not going to be bad. No. No one thought he was going to be bad, but no. everyone thought he was going to be yeah. fantastic. Yeah. But back to the Chargers, I, it's they're missing Joey Bosa, Keenan Allen's out. That's true. That's true. I, I forget his name, but their left tackle, one mm -hmm. of the, like his blind side, like that. It was just bad. 38-10. They're all out. So 38-10. That is really bad. I still have, and it is interesting because like just the way that the media like talks about Herbert as like just this golden boy, he, and then like yeah. Lamar. Yeah, like, Herbert doesn't even have – he's under 500 for his career. Yeah. He, hasn't, he hasn't made the playoffs. Lamar's won an MVP. He's, like, 30 and, like, 12. Yeah. He's, well, it's just speaking weird how, on the other behalf of Jacksonville's defense, mm -hmm. um, they have only given up 10 points in the last two games. Yeah, that, so, their defense is looking really good. Whatever's happening there, it's working. <laughs> and I'm saying, I think they might be the Bengals this year. I yeah. think they're going to make a little run. Maybe. All right, let's move on to some top NFL defenses. I want to know what defenses you have. Yeah. I have Eagles with the best defense right now. Um, their opponents are only averaging 3.8 yards um, per play, and they have a 34.5% third down conversion rate. I would probably have to say the Bucks because okay. you look at the Bucks and they're 2-1, and one, and Tom Brady – is really not doing much. Yeah. I mean, he is not performing. As yeah, he, he is should. not performing as he's. He's getting was divorced. Expecting. Divorced. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be a double whammy. Um, but that defense is leading that team. Like they're. Yeah. Um, they have one of the best games. pass rushing yeah. units in the NFL. Devin White. Oh my God, yeah. he is literally like everywhere. Yeah. Like if you watch the games, he. I mean the Bills. Also, we can't place. lose out on the Bills. No. Miami only averaged. Even though they lost, Miami only averaged 5.4 yards per play. Tyreek and Waddle only combined for 135 receiving yards, which is the lowest mm -hmm. on the season. Yeah. And then this week they're going to be without Phillips and Benford, though, on Sunday. So yeah. that's going to be a big loss because yeah. Phillips tends to play in if Von Miller is getting double teamed yeah. um, or they have all their attention on him, then Phillips yeah. can come in and do the job. But without yeah. him and Benford is going to be a little bit of a loss. Yeah. The 49ers also. I was also going to bring up the Niners, yeah. Joey Bosa. Um, uh, Nick Bosa. Oh, my gosh. Brothers. <laughs> Brothers. It's okay. 
Nick Bosa. Bosa, so Ohio State. Yes. Um, obviously, just a Shanahan coach team. They're always good defensively. I mean, pretty much every year the Niners are good defensively. Yeah. I, so. Um, so through three games, they have um, they have only allowed 148.3 yards per contest. Yeah. They have eight sacks and three interceptions on the season as well. Wow. Um, so they look exceptional. Also, weirdly, Cowboys defense. Kind of weirdly, but not. I mean, they still have Trayvon Diggs, yes. and then Micah Parsons is like. But Trayvon Diggs, I never thought. I always thought he was a little bit overrated. Just well, that's a lot of people think that because he he goes for picks, like he he does. Yes. So like he yes. gives up yards. He dives. Like, yeah, he'll give up he big plays. He anticipates it. Yeah, because he does that, that results in – he's not going to win every time, so yeah. that results in big plays, yeah. which – But they pressured Daniel Jones. It, it wasn't even necessarily their DBs. It was yeah. more their pass rushing. They pressured Daniel Jones 24 times on Monday night yeah. um, and held the Giants to 27.2% third down conversion yeah. rates. And, yeah, it's the Giants. Yes. <laughs> it's Daniel Jones. But they were 2-0. Yes. and oh. They were. I know. Mean, so. People were talking high hopes about the Giants. And yeah. really, really, the Cowboys, people were – Kind of throwing them, throwing them out, and uh, <laughs> you know, here they are, two and one. And Cooper Rush, I don't even think is playing that bad. I think he's no, kind of he's all. just doing what he needs to do. And in the NFC East, they have a chance to still make a wild card spot. You know, yeah. I don't think they're going to win, obviously, with how good the Eagles are playing. But um, no. yeah, I agree. All right, let's move on to some college football. My favorite, everybody, college football Let's do it. has been absolutely wild. And it might not seem like it by the top four teams right now, but if you look from five all the way to 20, it mm -hmm. has been absolutely crazy. A lot of basketball teams. A lot of basketball teams are all of a sudden becoming football teams. So we have Kentucky. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we have Kansas. Yeah, that is so weird to me. Yeah, Kansas is currently 4-0, and their quarterback has just campaigned himself as a freaking Heisman front runner from the games that he has been playing. He's been exceptional. Um, against Duke, he threw for 324 yards and ran for another 83 yards. So he's a, he's a dual threat guy. Yeah. Okay, okay. His name is Jalen Daniels, and he is definitely making himself a campaign for the Heisman Trophy. And it's pretty – this is why you love college football, because yes. there are these teams – it's not consistent. Maybe the top four can be consistent, but like last year, you have Cincinnati in the playoffs. I mean, mm -hmm. come on, gotta yeah. love college football, Andrew. Yeah, until you <laughs> until you face the big dogs. And until that's, you and face that's Georgia, yeah. <laughs> Alabama. I mean, we'll get into our top five teams, but Clemson, which you're uh, not very high on. But I just think those teams, so fun to watch. That's why we love college football. Yeah. They make names for themselves. Yeah. But then it's tough because then you play those bigger programs. Yeah. And they're just. They're but I mean, a, better a lot they of just... those teams are within those programs. So yeah. you have Tennessee, who's in the SEC, yeah. um, who's making a huge run for themselves. Yeah. Um, you have Arkansas, who also mm -hmm. happened to lose now. But they had, oh my God, Texas A&M, I don't know if you watched that game, had one not. of the craziest plays I've ever seen, um, which might have actually saved their season. Um, to beat To beat Arkansas. Oh, Arkansas. Yeah, so Tennessee is still undefeated. Okay. Um, Kansas is still undefeated. Yep. We have another crazy game. Middle Tennessee beat Miami 45-31. to 31. Middle Tennessee. Yeah. <laughs> now, granted, Miami of. always loses these weird games yeah. every year, I swear. But that's crazy. We yeah. have Texas, who is most definitely not back. Uh, <laughs> nope. Now, they have, they're without Quinn Ewers right now, which yeah. is huge. Because I sincerely believe that Texas would have beat Alabama if Quinn Ewers had not been hurt and left the game. Uh, but you also have Bryce Young on the other side. No, that's going to lead him down the field, calm and collective, drive, drive It was down the field, with not that much time left, though. That that's like why I say that. a minute 20. Yeah. A minute 20, marched down the field like it was nothing. Yeah. That's why I have Alabama. I mean, we can go into our top five teams. I don't know if you want to do that. I don't that disagree. For... Alabama will always be a top five team. Yeah. Always. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, that's just a guarantee. Yeah. They're going to get the best. Um, Clemson goes into a very emotional double overtime against Wake Forest. They do, but Wake Forest was 22nd ranked team. They were. And they got a tough matchup coming up. Um, the they play um, NC State. 10th, yes. 10th yes. ranked NC State tomorrow. Yes. Um, which will be a, a test for Clemson. Yeah. Um, I'm really excited about that game because I just don't see Clemson being the program that they've been 
in the last 10 years. Yeah, and that's where we uh, we differ. So I'm also excited mm -hmm. to see this game Me so too. I can uh, prove you wrong. <laughs> Ohio State, I think, definitely deserves that number two spot after their performance against Wisconsin. Um, they put up solid numbers. C.J. Stroud just continues each week to make a campaign for the Heisman Trophy as long as also Bryce Young mm -hmm. um, and Jalen Daniels is a new one yeah. out of Kansas. So It seems like this year's got – it seemed like last year like there wasn't a lot of quarterbacks, like no, real top the quarterbacks. No, quarterback you know? and, like, this draft year, class last year was the worst quarterback yeah. draft class we have seen in probably 25 years. Like absolutely. no rookies are playing right now. No, absolutely. No. This coming year you'll have Bryce Young, C.J. Stroud. Mm -hmm. um, Georgia. Stetson uh, Bennett. Yeah. Um, he's going to be controversial. I bet you he he's won't controversial get, he won't because get he, the way he looks. Early. But look at how dominant Georgia, Georgia is the most dominant team in college football right now. Yeah, that's fair. But they're also, I mean, just, I mean, you look through their team defensively, offensively. Yeah. I mean, they're just yeah. built. Um, Arkansas hosts Alabama this week. That'll with a, a nice SEC showdown. Yeah, yep. if Arkansas didn't lose to Texas A&M, they'd be undefeated as well. And they're looking not bad either. They look legit. But that'll be, I mean, two and two if they lose to Alabama. So, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that'd be that'd be tough to fall to two and two this early in the season. Yeah. So let's get into our top fives. Andrew let's and I it. are going to go over our top five for both NFL and college football. Um, let's go ahead and start off with our NFL top five. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Uh, so for me... I have number one, the Philadelphia Eagles. I wow. think Jalen Hurts. Only undefeated team right now. Only undefeated team. Jalen Hurts, I know a lot of people have doubted him, but I think he's made huge strides in his passing game. Absolutely. He's obviously always had the running ability. Uh -huh. You throw that in with A.J. Brown coming Devontae to the team. Devontae Smith, who Devontae's just had an absolutely monster, monster game. Monster game. Second season now, so yeah. he's got a little bit more under his belt. Um, and then defensively, you just listed them as uh -huh. the best defensive team in the NFL. I did. You put all that together, they look like the hot team right now to yeah. beat. So I got them as number one. I got the Bills at number two. I know that we were just talking about how they lost to Miami. I see that as a fluke game. I still think you have Josh Allen and that defense and Stephon Diggs. And yeah. it. I just think they look, also just the eye test, they look like just one of the best teams in football. Um, number three, I had Miami. That's going to be difficult to see going forward if two is out for a while. But yeah. I do still feel like, I mean, defensively, Jalen Waddle, Tyreek Hill on offense. I mean, even I like Moster and uh, Chase Edmonds in the backfield. Yeah. So I really do like their team. If Tua can come back, and it sucks because he was looking really good as we were just talking about. So, so much more confident than any other season he'd played in. So I hope he can come back. Um, but as of right now, week three, I have them as the third best team. Baltimore, Lamar's looking like an MVP candidate. Mm -hmm. Still don't really have a receiver. I mean, they got Rashad Bateman on the on, on the outside, but um, Mark Andrews still looks dominant. I think the only thing, I have them at four because, one, they lost to Miami. Two, defensively, which is weird. You always think of the Ravens as a really good defensive team. They just haven't really lived no. up to expectations no. in that regard. Actually, they've... They lost them games. I mean, yeah. the Ravens were losing or beating. There's the no Dolphins more Ravens like, with what Ray Lewis anymore. No, yeah, that, that time has that passed. Area, <laughs> that area is gone. Um, so yeah, I got the Ravens at four, and then at five, I got Kansas City. I think, okay. as we were talking, Mahomes. You put yeah. you put him on any team, they got a chance. Yeah. Plus, I mean, they still do have Travis Kelsey, Andy Reid, one of the better coaches in football. Yeah. I mean, he's, defensively, they don't look as bad as previous years. Yeah. So, I have them at five. Uh, yeah, so that's my top five. All right, I got, starting with number one, like I mentioned, Buffalo Bills. I know they lost to Miami. They had that fluke loss. I do think it was a fluke loss. Yes. Mistakes that never happen with the Bills. They have an all-star defense. You add that veteran Von Miller there, it just uplifted their entire defense. Yeah. On both ends of the field, they look spectacular, mm -hmm. and that's how you win a Super Bowl. Yeah. Um, at my number two, I have the Dolphins, obviously. Um, <laughs> Tua, <laughs> after last night, I probably yeah. wouldn't have placed them there. But if Tua is in, I do have the Dolphins at number two. They have a chance to make it to the playoffs. Now, that could be a really, really good matchup. Um, yeah. It's the Bills and the Dolphins. They play one more time this season at Buffalo. Yeah. 
Um, so hoping Tua will be back then for yeah. that game. That will be yeah. special. Number three, I have the Eagles. Only remaining undefeated team. Like we said, Devontae Smith, Jalen Hurts have a special connection. Mm -hmm. um, Devontae Smith just made two – two of his plays made the top ten. Um, yeah, his like – he almost did a bad Yeah, throw, <laughs> so we always bit, know yeah. – the Slim Reaper was yep. coming out. Yep. Was coming out to play. Yep. Um, and then number four, always Kansas City. No matter what, they, first of all, their playoff, they play so well in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. They play so well leading up to the playoffs. I just don't see them not performing towards the end mm -hmm. of the season. So I have them there. And then my number five, Tampa Bay. Like we said, their defense is so dominant. Everyone will tell you defense wins championships, and it's still Tom Brady. Yeah. We can say what we want. It's still Tom Brady. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, he's got yeah. those rings. He's going to come out one time. I really time wanted to just... put him in my top five. It's just, uh, yeah, he, he's looked bad. He's I mean, looked honestly, bad. He, like, not even like. Not just, not just his playing, but his yeah. health. He looks like he's decaying a yeah. little bit. Well, he is 46 Sorry. now, so yeah. he's um, pushing that envelope for sure. Yeah, so, but it's still Tom Brady. I just yes. feel like he's just going to come out of nowhere. He's going to get things settled at home. Yes. <laughs> he's just going to come yep. out and play. And this also, this is week three, so. Yes, these are very early. As one of my favorite, uh, favorite analysts, Stephen A., would say, it's <laughs> fluid. You know, it, cha <laughs> it changes as the season goes, so. Yeah. Okay. You know, who knows? Yeah. For NCAA four. top five. Let's do it. Get into it. Uh, I'll, you start. You start. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. So number one, it looks like we got the same one. I have yeah. Georgia. I mean, Stetson Bennett, still like whether he get, goes to the NFL and is dominant, he's dominant in the college. And the Georgia Bulldogs have dominated this season. I mean, they blew out Oregon for uh -huh. whatever it's like oh forty six or three. Um, and that was when Oregon was like a top. 10 ranked oh team. My, oh my god, Oregon was ranked. Yeah, so I mean that just shows the high. difference in caliber of play. Um, number two, I got Alabama. I still think, obviously, Nick Saban. You got Bryce Young. Mm -hmm. And then just, I mean, there's so many guys. That I mean, I the can athletes name. that you get on these top five teams are so different than the athletes you get on some of these yeah. lower division conference teams. 100%. And that's like, why I feel like when you have the college football playoffs, it's so hard. Like, you throw in Cincinnati in there, it's yeah. like, God, like, how do you compete with that? Exactly. But um, number three, I got Clemson. I still think they've been out of, out of the mix the past couple of years, but I, I just had a feeling this year that they were gonna, they were gonna make a little run, and uh -huh. Davos Sweeney's still there. He got paid, he got that 10 year bag. <laughs> So, Are you a Clemson fan or something? Uh, you know, maybe I should lock a jersey. I mean, I essentially got it on right now, but. Uh, yeah, I think they look good all around. They had a tough, a tough matchup against Wake Forest that I think went had them sweating a little bit. But Very it's still number so. twenty-two ranked team, and they got the win. And this coming up week, they got a, another matchup, top ten team. So yeah. I think that's going to propel them. I think this will be the teller of where they get placed into the remaining season. I, I agree. And then uh, number four, I got Ohio State. Um, as you already alluded <laughs> to, I mean, it's, it's your team, but. They look good. I mean, they look dominant. And, you know, I can see them going far. I see them as a top four team going to mm -hmm. the playoffs. So um, yeah. I'm interested to see to see uh, the rest of the season I with mean, them. You, you put them next to each other. It's just such a disgrace. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then number five, I got Michigan. You still got John Harbaugh there. Um, or is it Jim Harbaugh? Jim Harbaugh. Jim Harbaugh, that's right. Um, I just think that culture, last year they made real big strides, and I think this year they're going to continue that. And I think through uh, four games now, those are my top five teams. Um, it'll definitely be a game that I'm going to look forward to. Yes. I'm scared, but it's okay. Mich Michigan, Ohio State. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we, don't, we don't say their name. But... <laughs> oh, no, you don't. So if you can see, okay, so my top five, Georgia Bulldogs, absolutely, I think – Almost every person in the country would have Georgia as their number one right now. They're the most dominant team. Um, they look scary. They look like they're going to roll through two through five. I'm being serious. Um, number two, I have my Ohio State Buckeyes. We did not start this season off as strong as we would have liked. And obviously Notre Dame coming out and not performing like the like the analysts had them performing at yeah. only hurts us because yeah. that was a top 10 win for us mm -hmm. and then Notre Dame goes and loses to a non-even ranked team yeah. and it just hurts 
our look. It does. Right. But then we go in and we play Wisconsin, who Wisconsin is, no matter what, always a good defensive team. Um, in the past, they've always dominated defensively, and they've always had really great running backs. Yeah. Um, a lot of really great running backs in the NFL have come out of Wisconsin, so they yeah. have always been a powerhouse for that. We come in and we just destroy them. I mean, it was it made me very happy yeah. um, because we haven't performed like that in a while. I'd say our only flaw is that sometimes we have a difficult time putting two halves together. Yeah. We will perform really well, normally the second half, and not so great in the first half or you know vice versa. Yeah. That is our only flaw, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, number three, I have Alabama. Of course, you've got to put Alabama in there. No matter what, like you said, kinda Nick like Saban. The yeah, they're it's kind of like they're the just Chiefs. always yeah. there. And you're coached by Nick Saban. I mean, their game against Texas, I thought for a minute they're going to lose. They had, I'm pretty sure, over 20 um, flags called on them. And Nick Saban must have ripped that team a new one because they came out the other end looking mm -hmm. so much more disciplined, yeah. so much better. Um, no matter what, you have Heisman winner last year, Bryce Young. Yes. You have athletes on that team. Yeah. Um, so <clears throat> they're going to make a run for it. My number four, I have USC Trojans. It might sound weird, my four and five. But I think USC has a very good opportunity to make the playoffs this year. Obviously, like we said, you add the addition of Lincoln Riley, who is a veteran coach. He's a phenomenal coach from Oklahoma. Yeah. You have Caleb Williams. I mean, he took basically half the team. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> he took half the team with him. Yeah. Um, they look disciplined. They look sharp. They're going to win the Pac-12. I'm saying it, calling it now. Yeah, I, I, say, I think that's likely. And I think if you have a really good team winning the Pac-12, because there have, hasn't been a strong Pac-12 team in the future, in the past, I mean. In a while. Um, they're going to put them in the college playoffs because yeah. they want they want that. Even mm. though USD and UCLA will be joining the Big Ten. Um, yeah, that's a conversation <laughs> I had. I think that's weird. Yeah. But, yeah. Number five, I have my, oh, oh, not my, but Oklahoma State Cowboys. Um, this could seem weird. They have been so dominant this season. Granted, they have not played anyone who c would make a huge impact on their yeah. rankings, um, but they look really good. Yeah. Um, and they play Baylor tomorrow, which is a really good game. Baylor is ranked... 22 I th I believe mm -hmm. um, so that will be a really good top 25 matchup yeah. um, which will definitely be a teller for their season I believe yeah yeah so that's it couldn't oh. couldn't put just couldn't put Michigan in my top five I couldn't <laughs> get myself to do it even though they We're probably should have be in to there <laughs> you're gonna have to when they beat Ohio State you're pushing it. Okay, let's get into Boise State football really quick. We're just going to run through it. A lot that has happened in the past yeah. week. It's been a whirlwind for sure. We have offensive coordinator Tim Plow fired. Yeah. After last game, you have Dirk Coetter coming in and replacing him, and it's only yes. been four games. And shortly after that firing, mm -hmm. our quarterback, Hank Bachmeyer, Enters the transfer portal. Yeah. I mean, he has to. He knows offensive coordinator is gone. New offensive yeah. coordinator isn't playing me. I'm not performing. Yeah. He's reading the room, and he understands yeah. what's happening. Yeah. And as he should, I, I think, honestly, if I was him, I'd want to leave, too, with the yeah. amount of disrespect he's getting from, like, Oh, my God. That's a whole nother. I mean, dude, the comments on social media are pretty bad. I, I, he, I don't think he should be getting that much hate. No, but... Sports fans sports are brutal, are, sports man. Sports are intense. <laughs> that's, that's for sure. That's for sure. But, I mean, it's definitely big moving forward. Yeah. Looks like Talon will probably be our quarterback, mm -hmm. I would expect, which means we'll probably go through some growing pains as a yeah. – Yeah. You know, I first mean, we, we look – I wouldn't – see, this is why – I don't think we look bad. I think there are pieces that need to be plugged into the right yeah. spot, and it will all come together. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think Taylor Green will be really good, um, but I don't think he should be running the ball as much when our running back has been performing so well. I really think they should yeah. focus him <clears throat> on an in-pocket passer. Yeah, it, the tough thing is he doesn't strike, at least just off of the eye test, I think he has some mechanical things he needs to work out throwing the ball, yeah. which well, he'll get better and better and better yeah. each game, each throw. But. I also think our offensive line is a little bit shaky. I mean, yeah, we're which, giving our quarterbacks like four seconds to throw the ball. <laughs> yeah, so I think the fact that Taylor, I mean, he's an elite athlete, not just an athlete. Like, he is really, he's 6'6", six, yeah. six, he can run like the wind. Like, yeah. he's going to help out our team in that asset because 
with a bad O-line, you kind of need a quarterback that can get away from defenders on their, on their own. But, you know, I mean, I was kind of saying we should start tailing from the beginning, so I'm excited to watch. I'm very watch. excited. There's a game tonight. SDSU, that will be a, actually a little rival game. A little rival game. It'll be a so, big game. It'll be good. Yeah. Um, moving on. If we quickly would like to go through the NBA, we just have yeah. some a little bit of off-season news for you guys. Um, the NBA is coming up, um, yep. and there has been some headlines. Definitely, uh, I would say the biggest move over the off-season was Donovan Mitchell, former Utah Jazz uh -huh. player, now like star player. <laughs> a star player. A lot of teams were trying to get him because they knew that they knew that he was available when they traded Rudy Gobert mm -hmm. a few months prior. They're kind of going through a rebuild. That yeah. means they're going to get rid of Donovan. They got a lot back, but they went, didn't get bad players back. They actually they got, got a lot of picks. They got a lot of picks, and they got um, what's his name? Um, oh I God, should I know can't. This. Yeah, I can't remember. <clears throat> Who do you think won the trade? I think for sure, the Cavs, because the Cavs kept Jared Allen, Evan Mobley. Um, Karis LeVert, Darius Garland, like they only get Isaac Okor, they, they kept their whole team. They yeah. only gave up picks. Like their team is really good. I have them being a top four team in the East next year just because, I mean, they could be higher. I think that it's just hard to predict that when you got teams like yeah. Milwaukee and all those teams that have been there longer. But I, I think the Cavs are going to make some noise this year. Probably now that they have Donovan Mitchell, absolutely. That's a really good he team. He's a little bit injury prone, I, I think. Yeah. Um, but I think if he can remain healthy, mm -hmm. I think it'll look really good. I mean, that front it'll court. It'll fit well. That front, oh, dude, they're scary because that front court is Jarrett Allen and Evan Mobley, super lengthy centers. Yeah. Evan Mobley can stretch, shoot yeah. threes in mid-range. He's like a um, Jared Allen can guard pretty much anyone you want him to who's going to yeah. cause problems on the likes of Giannis or Joel Embiid, uh -huh. like just those guys that like you need someone to be able to at least guard them. Yeah. You have that in Jared Allen. And now you're looking at the backcourt. Darius Garland was an all-star last year. And now you throw in Donovan Mitchell, Mitchell. who's yeah. like. He's going to fit really well. Yeah. The, it's it, a perfect I'm fit. really excited to watch the Cavs yeah. this year. Speaking on a more controversial headline. Yes. Um, we have Celtics coach suspended. Yeah. Suspended for the entire year. Um, after it came out that he was having a consensual relationship with a female staff member. Now, obviously we don't have a lot of details about what occurred. Yeah. Um, however, he was engaged. Um, and it is in the bylaws that you cannot have a relationship with another staff member um, within the organization. Yeah. So... I guess I, I'm really it interested... It hurts the Celtics a lot. Yeah. I'm really interested to hear more. I am too. Because, well. I don't know. I mean, if it's a consensual relationship, I guess I get the bylaws and how you don't want that in an organization. But a year. But I feel like there are worse things happening with like, lower yeah, suspensions. A year, Absolutely. Especially because the Suns' owner just got only a year. I mean, he's selling the team. That's a whole other conversation. Yeah, I mean, that's... On yeah. its own. But I just felt it was a little over the top, unless there's some there's more, more stuff that yeah. comes out that it's like, it was really well, causing problems within the, the organization. The main problem I had with it is not only that, you know, they're losing their head coach for a year, is there's no consistency in these suspensions and these, all these rules in the yeah. NBA, in the NFL, in everything. There's no consistency in the way, and listen, a lot of the issues are not black and white, so I could yeah. understand. But there is such a long range of things that are happening that are not okay yeah. that are getting so much lower suspension time. And it just doesn't. There's no consistency. It's not making sense. And I feel like sometimes people look at a coach like, oh, okay, well, it's not a star player, so we're, we can suspend him for longer maybe. Yeah. But that shouldn't be – there should be more consistency in the way that rulings take yeah, place. Yeah, it's, it's definitely a touchy subject, kind of how you put it. It's not, not always black yeah. and white. Plus, I mean, really, like, who do you – like, how do you have, like, a set in stone? Not like, set in stone, but I mean – I know there what should you be mean. like okay, this type of situation should be this many, yeah, um, this long of a suspension, this yeah. type of, si you know what I mean? Yeah. And then you determine from there like th the time frame. Yeah, because the year long suspension, it's an indefinite, indefinitely suspended. Indefinite. So like it's, they could say after the year, oh, we actually want to suspend you longer, yeah. which is like, 
That's I don't know. It just seems because they probably weird to me. don't like, have all the information, so they're waiting to see if they can get all the information. I guess, but then that again just ties back to like I want to hear this information because like yeah. what could it have possibly been if it was a consensual relationship? Yeah. Obviously, no he was cheating on his wife. That's yeah. a whole another thing. But yeah. like, yeah, I don't know. Like within the organization, like a year. Yeah, I, mean, I don't we'll know. We'll see. I don't know. We'll see. On better news for the Celtics, they picked up Blake Griffin today, this morning, actually. Yeah, that was brand new. Um, and that's not, like, something I'm going to get all over the top about or any Celtics fan would get over the top about. He's old. Good veteran player, though. But he though, like... is a veteran player. I think that's always a good thing to have. Yeah. And he can make an impact if he yeah. stays healthy. Yeah. I agree. I think it's a good pickup for you guys coming off the bench. Um it's not like we got to pay him that much. Either. No, you don't. You don't have to pay him much, and you know he does a lot of dirty work. So yeah. I think he's a good player. He's a good defensive player as he well. Is. So and yeah. our defense is already pretty good. So yeah, one of the best in the league. Yeah. So I think it'll be it's it'll be a great uh, matchup with yeah. other teams. Should we? Uh, yeah, should we talk some on. baseball. Oh yeah, some a lot baseball. Going on. You got your Dodgers. Uh huh. We got the Dodgers. Aaron Judge is making some noise. There's yeah. a lot going on right now. My there is M's, a lot going. My M's might make the playoffs <laughs> after 21 years. So we're getting close to the postseason here in baseball. How many games did we say? We have six games, eight games left. It's a, it's eight. eight I think games, it's eight yeah. games left. Um, the Dodgers have the. Best franchise, or they break the franchise win record for a single season. They are 108 to 40, or 108 wins to 48 losses, um, sitting 22 games above the Padres, who are in second place in the NL West division, which is the biggest gap in any of the divisions this yeah, year. Yeah, that's a lot of wins. <laughs> yeah, it you is guys, a lot of wins. You guys in the Rock or in the Astros? Uh huh are going crazy yeah. this year. Um, it's the first team in MLB history with at least 106 wins in three consecutive seasons. So in 2019, obviously 2022 was COVID season. Yes. Uh, or 2020 was COVID season, yeah. so we didn't play. So 2019, 2021, we had 106 wins each. Now we're at 108. Yeah, I mean, if that no, isn't pay, incredible, you, you know, you're paying everyone a lot <laughs> of money, so you should win. Yeah. So we don't. So for those of you that don't know, baseball doesn't have a cap. Um, owners can choose to put in as much pay for their players as they want. That's kind of the unique thing about baseball. And that's why you see teams like L.A. Uh -huh. and New York normally have the biggest and stars. Houston and Houston as well. They have the most money to pay. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Obviously, L.A. is a massive franchise. There's so much money getting yeah. put into all L.A. teams. Mm -hmm. So the owner can choose to say, hey, I'm actually going to pay a lot of money to a lot of players. Yeah. And if we don't win the World Series this year, that's going to look really bad on our organization because we have the best team in in MLB. Based off a of roster, yeah, you should. If you, yeah, just looking at – Yeah. <coughs> oh, my God. I apologize. Excuse me. We're good. Um, yeah, uh, Aaron Judge <coughs> just got hit 61 the other day, looking like he might break the record. Isn't he one away? Or did he break the record he just with 61? Did. 61 <coughs> broke the record. <coughs> sorry. I'm so sorry. Oh, um okay. He ties Roger Maris uh, at 61, so they okay. outpass Babe Ruth. Okay. Well, that would be definitely interesting to see. I think that that's a whole other conversation, but I think Barry Bonds, I think that his should count. He he reached, like, I think it was, like, 70-something. The only, but... like, non-steroid-taking players. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, the top three record holders right now. Yeah. We're all on steroids. Yeah. So they don't, they count do, them. they count them. Yeah. I mean, he still hasn't like, but it is, they, they're yeah. at a dif disadvantage. They're not taking steroids. I <laughs> guess, yeah, it's fair. I still think it should be counted because it was done, but that's a, you know, another Ob time. Obviously. Yeah. So it was against Toronto Blue Jays. Um, kind of a cool storyline. It took Maris until the last game of the season to break Babe Ruth's 60 home run record um judge um which is kind of cool so that was october 1st judge did it september 28th yeah um cool storyline there and it happened to go into the yankees dugout the ball which is also special because they were able to keep it and the dugout players were trying to make a deal with judge his own team on how much he would have to pay them to get the <laughs> ball obviously it was just a joke yeah 
Um, but Judge ended up giving the ball to his mom, Patty, which yeah. she said, she goes, it was awesome. It was just so awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's, that's really a, yeah, special. Yeah, it's exciting for New York, exciting for Aaron, and, you know, I want to see him hit a couple more before the season's done. Oh, he will. Yeah. Um, it's, it's insane. Yeah. And, uh, okay, should, yep. yeah. Move so let's go ahead and move on to some of our local sports news about our very own Boise State women's soccer and women's beach volleyball team. Yeah, so our Boise State women's soccer team completed their fourth shutout of the season against Nevada, showing great promise for the defensive line. On the offensive side, freshman forward Hayden Wilsey has already logged seven goals in just 11 games. Boise State's beach volleyball was named the to the USMC AVCA Academic Honor Roll. This is the second consecutive year that the Broncos have been named Team Honor Roll. Their first game will be held on October 8th at the University of Washington. And, uh, you know, now to start off a new season, it's yeah. only fitting that we introduce a new segment. So this week we'll be displaying tweets about recent sports topics picked from our producer, Joanny, and Alex and I We'll be reacting to them live. Yep. So, so let's go ahead and uh, kick things off with the very first tweet. The NFL has, has a, a lot, lot of questions, questions to answer, answer after, after this, this one. one. I assume if they're talking about Tua, the I fact, think they're talking I, about Tua. Because so prior, the week before Tua just went down with the whole like spaz thing, thing, seizure, <laughs> he, he went out with like – People thought he had a concussion because I mean, he, he was, tripped. like, stumbling. He, he's stumbling. He was tripping. His players had to hold him up. Yeah. Players Association is going after them. Yeah, and essentially he, he passed the passed the um, concussion protocol, went, came back into the game, and now I think that tweet is referring to probably the fact that Tua just got hurt again yeah. with a head injury. So they're probably thinking that he skipped the concussion protocol. Probably. That, that would be my guess I think guess that's what that it tweet. is. All right, um, let's go on to the next one. And then, and then there is one, fly, Eagles, fly. They have such Look a cupcake them. schedule, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, People I don't know. People hate on the Eagles. People the really hate on the Eagles. They do. I mean, that's... Well, there are people. A lot of people are hating on their schedule to open up the year. I think that the Vikings are better than people are portraying. They're the Vikings are always. They're their Vikings defense is scary. The the Vikings defense. Yes. Yeah, they are. Yeah, and offensively, I mean, they haven't lived up the past two games, but I mean, I mean they still have Justin Jefferson and Dalvin Cook. Yeah, Kirk Cousins. you have Kirk Cousins at quarterback, who's just yeah. he's not gonna make this like massive play, but he's pretty consistent. Yeah, but um. Yeah, I mean, I guess that that's just an Eagle fan tweeting that. So. Yes. <laughs> um, but unfortunately, that is all the time we have for today, guys. So tell us, you know, how you would have reacted to those tweets in the comments below. Also, we want to hear from you about what topics you want to talk us to talk about. Tell us in the comments or DM our new Instagram account at Beyond the Whistle BSU to send in your topic requests. And we want to send a big thank you to all of you for joining us for this episode. Finally, we couldn't do this without our producer and crew, so to each of them, we send our gratitude. I'm Andrew Vincent. And I'm Alex East. Join us next time on Beyond the Whistle for all your sports news needs.